Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining our Coveo for Sitecore demo webinar session. I'll be your host. My name is Clara Boulanger. I work on the marketing team here at Coveo, and I'm really excited to be a part of today's session. I'm also thrilled to be joined by two speakers today. We originally um, had Simon Langevin scheduled today to speak to you about our new features on uh, Coveo for Sitecore, but uh, taking its place is Vincent Bernard, who is Solution Specialist at Coveo. And we also have Paul Sheridan, who is a Sales Engineer at Coveo. I have a couple of housekeeping items to cover quickly before we get started. First, everyone is in listen-only mode. However, we do want to hear from you during today's presentation. We'll be answering questions at the end of the session, so please feel free to send those along using the Q&A section on your screen. Today's webinar is being recorded and you'll receive the presentation within 24 hours of the conclusion of the event. Finally, there will be a brief survey at the end of the session. Please help us improve future webinars by providing your feedback on the webinar content and experience. For those of you just joining us, welcome to our Coveo for Sitecore demo webinar session. Now let's get started. Vincent, please take it away. Hey guys, good morning. Uh, this is Vincent Bernard, Solution Architect for Coveo for Sitecore, and I'm here today to speak about the April release and all the new features that we uh, introduced uh, within, I think it was last week. So basically in the April release, we packed it with two features that were uh, demanded for quite a time by uh, our developers. SXA compliance and then the silent install uh, configuration service. So I will walk you through those uh, two features and I will start with SXA. So if you guys don't know it, SXA it's Sitecore Experience Accelerator. It is a module that was sold before uh, by Sitecore and Sitecore 8 and it is now included by default in Sitecore 9. And this module comes with a new development methodology as well as uh, some SXA component, as we called it. So any provider of uh, an external solution such as Coveo had to be compliant with uh, SXA to make it work. So basically, that's what we've done. We took the Coveo for Sitecore Hive framework components and we wrapped them in the SXA format. It was cool for us since um, the Hive introduced a uh, little we broke the Covio UI in smaller parts, so it was kind of easy to wrap them in a 60 compliant uh, components. Basic, basically, all the uh, excitement around Sitecore Commerce and the SXA search component made us wonder uh, how could we improve the product and leverage that SXA framework. So basically, what you need to do is after installing SXA on a site, Core instance, you can just download the Covio for Sitecore SXA package and install it as you would do with a Covio for Sitecore regular package. And then you will be able to add those components within a tenant in your website and use the drag and drop feature that was introduced with SXA. Uh, one of the main difference with that approach is uh, that we end the time of the Covio frame area so basically you don't need to rely on our column system you can now fall back on any system that you you're using basically a bootstrap style 12 uh, column um, frame so for each component you're creating rows and columns and you drag and drop those components to make a search interface that's re that really fits your business requirement whenever you want to go mobile or you just want to have uh, something that that is re, um, resizable. Um, so it's now up to the developers to define the rows, the column, and all the sections that will be the frame behind the search interface. Uh, you will still have to define data sources for your components. So for the people who have played with Hive, it's not a big uh, or a huge difference, but still, I uh, worked with it a lot yesterday to build a demo, and it was, um, I love the experience. It was quite amazing. Uh, so that was the SXA part. The second part of the features that we introduced in April is the silent install. And this one is quite a cool feature. So this feature was requested by developers and is used to install Covio for Sitecore in a scaled environment. In our product architecture, Covio for Sitecore had a non-prem module that needs to be installed on every Sitecore instance. And then you have the cloud part, or if you're on-prem, you will have the Covio CES server on-prem. But then the, the, the part 
that resides within uh, Sitecore servers uh, needed to be configured manually. So after the installation, you had a post wizard uh, that helps the administrator with a few configuration steps. That's what we stripped off the product and we can now it, it is still there, but now you have options to configure your instance remotely. So basically those steps, um, to do those steps programmatically is a really huge advantage in massive scale environments since you would have to log in each machine and do those post steps install uh, quite a few times. So uh, to test those new features, we included Swagger in the Clear for Cycle package. So you can now call directly Swagger to see all the, the services that are exposed via APIs. And the more we will go with the next release, the more services we will add to that Swagger, Swagger interface. Um, and for the install and the configuration service, basically what you have now is you can define your cloud organization ID, the search API key, uh, your Sitecore credentials, the, if you want to use the body indexing of the document or you just want to push Sitecore document directly, and if you want to index permission or not, you can also set the farm name. So basically you can create a really simple script that will configure multiple servers across the same farm, reducing the tools and the time needed uh, to deploy Covio in, in really massive environment. So this is really a huge step for us since before we had to log in each instance and do those steps manually. And those features were requested uh, by a lot of users. So that's all for those features that we release in April. And I think it's up to you, Paul. <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks, Vincent. I really appreciate the uh, the background on the latest release of Kaveo for Sidecore. Uh, I think the the silent install option is going to be clearly, especially important for our partners and our customers who are deploying multi-server uh, Sidecore environments and and or migrating from their sandbox to production environments. Just making that process. Uh, much simpler and much more consistent. So, uh, so thanks very much uh, f for for your guest appearance today, Vincent. <laughs> the opening band, shall we say? <laughs> Thank you, Paul. So, um, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us again uh, this uh, this month on our, our monthly uh, demo session for uh, Caveo for Sitecore. Um, what we often do, uh, what we usually, what we always do on these sessions is to walk through a little bit of an introduction. We typically have a bit of a mixed audience of partners and customers, some of whom are brand new to uh, Caveo, uh, Caveo for Sitecore, or even sometimes to Sitecore itself. So we, we take a little bit of an overview of, uh, of the Caveo for Sitecore architecture just by way of an introduction. We'll walk through a couple of examples of some uh, uh, recent uh, customer website deployments, and we'll have a little bit of a look at the, uh, the back end of how you uh, configure uh, Kaveo within Sitecore, how you manage the Kaveo cloud uh, indexing process. Uh, but this is really intended to just be a bit of an introduction, a taster perhaps for um, perhaps a follow-up session where we could get into more detail about uh, your requirements or your customers' requirements. Uh, so we'd be very uh, happy to uh, contact you uh, after today's session. Just by way of a, a bit of a architectural overview, uh, once again, Kaveo is a, at its core, a cloud-based indexing and search uh, platform with a lot of other great stuff built around it from the point of view of usage analytics uh, logging, from the point of view of relevance tuning, and from the point of view of uh, machine learning as a technology applied to that usage analytics behavioral information in order to improve the user experience automatically, learning from user behaviors to boost the best content, to make improved uh, suggestion, query suggestions or type ahead suggestions as the user interacts with your system. So we often think of Kaveo, you know, well, at its core, as I said, we're an indexing and search technology as really relevance technology. We're de delivering the most relevant content to the user in the context of, of where they are, what kind of person they are, what kind of user they are. <clears throat> From an architectural point of view then, uh, Kaveo, while we're able to index many different kinds of information, many different data sources, whether it's applications, websites, databases, even through our indexing APIs, we have a particularly tight integration to Sitecore as a content management platform that we've been developing and working on and improving over the last six or seven years. And as Vincent mentioned, uh, we have a very recent uh, release of the Kaveo for Sitecore package just come out uh, in the last week or so. So how does Kaveo work with Sitecore in particular? Well, the index and the relevance algorithms and such are, are hosted in the cloud, but there is a package, a component that's installed on your Sitecore server or servers. 
And what really what that manages is a couple of different things. On the back end, from the point of view of indexing content, uh, there are a set of configuration files and indexing pipelines that tie into Sitecore such that when you publish a new page from Sitecore or uh, update a page or, for that matter, delete one, that in information, the page, the parts of the page you intend to index, the metadata associated to it, that's all pushed to Caveo pretty much immediately to be indexed in the cloud, to be made searchable right away. Also along with that information, of course, there's security information potentially, permissions associated to the page or the item that you're publishing, and potentially, if you're if you're using uh, Sitecore's uh, XDB person, XDB-driven personalization capabilities, there might be persona profile card information associated with pages and, and of course, with users or personas as well. And that can all be pushed to Caveo to be indexed to tune relevance once again. So making sure, of course, that users can only see content that is relevant to them, whether it's based on their permissions, whether it's based on their perceived persona based on Sitecore, that's really a, a key part of what Caveo provides with regard to Sitecore content. Of course, as I mentioned, you can index other sorts of uh, content as well. You might have blogs running on other non-Sitecore content management systems. You might have a YouTube channel. You might have uh, SharePoint uh, content, Microsoft Dynamics. That can all be unified in a single index. Again, respecting the security of the underlying um, data sources that we're indexing and return to the user in the search experience that is built in Sitecore. So the other part of the Caveo for Sitecore module or package that we install on the Sitecore server really consists of these components that allow you to build and configure a search experience that resides within Sitecore. All of these components, again, uh, Vincent referred to the Hive framework. That's our, our, our name for the latest version of our framework within uh, within Sitecore that allows you to, again, build this uh, responsive and, uh, and uh, feature-rich uh, search interface. All of these components are based on our underlying JavaScript UI framework, which can also be used outside of Sitecore. So if you're building a search experience or a search box even on your, say, blog site, that search box built with the Caveo JavaScript UI framework can also access this same index. So your content, whether it comes from Sitecore, from, say, for example, WordPress, from YouTube, you can surface all that same content to your users uh, from within your Sitecore page or a non-Sitecore page. I will also talk a little about usage analytics. So Caveo is able to log uh, to our usage analytics database stored in the cloud information about user search and click behavior and potentially also custom events. So it's certainly very interesting to understand what are people searching for on your site? Are they finding what they're looking for? Are they finding anything? What do they do uh, after they search? Do they click on anything? Do they navigate further? Do they revise their search? All that information is stored in Caveo's usage analytics um, databases. We have dashboards and reports that allow you to dig into that and to take that information to learn from what users are doing on your site, both from the point of view of simply dashboards and reports, of course, but also based on machine learning um, uh, algorithms and, and models to start to automatically tune results that are uh, being returned to the user. I'll dig into this in a little bit of detail as we go through a couple of demos here uh, in one second. What we often do on uh, on these demo set, what we always do on these demo sessions, really, uh, is to show off uh, some examples of implementations of Caveo for Sitecore uh, on our customers' websites. And I'm going to walk really kind of quickly through a couple of these uh, relatively recent ones. Uh, Dignity Memorial is a, um, uh, a chain of funeral homes, uh, cemeteries uh, throughout uh, North America, and they've, they're leveraging Caveo relatively recently on their website to help people find uh, either information about the, where their businesses are located their funeral homes and cemeteries, but also uh, more general information as well uh, around planning for uh, planning for funerals, planning for, for these sorts of events as well. So as an example, as I start to type in a query on uh, on their site, uh, I can get my list of, uh, of locations. Uh, and they've done a nice job, I think, of uh, displaying results, not just in a traditional text-oriented manner, of course, uh, but also in a map interface as well. So Caveo is returning the search results. It's being passed to a uh, Google map uh, interface and delivered to the user in this manner. As I mentioned, also, they uh, they are using uh, Caveo for not just uh, searching for locations, although that's uh, clearly a, an important part of what they do, uh, but also uh, searching the rest of the information on their site. So as an example, uh, if I start to type in the word uh, eulogy here, uh, we'll start to see uh, results coming back uh, filtered potentially by different kinds of content. So Caveo can use um, any metadata available to us, whether these are 
uh, uh, tags or, or properties within Sitecore, or for that matter, uh, HTML tags or other metadata formats from other data sources to enable the user to drill down to specific kinds of information that they're looking for, whether it's uh, etiquette uh, around certain kinds of, uh, of uh, celebrations, funeral planning information. So they're publishing a wide variety of types of content uh, to their site, and they need to have uh, the ability for the user to, to, to drill down uh, quickly and easily to uh, the kinds of content that are, in fact, uh, most relevant to them. So in many ways, a relatively simple uh, example of a, uh, I think, a nice clean implementation of, uh, of Caveo on top of Sitecore. A bit of a different use case, uh, Faskin Martineau are a, a law firm uh, here in Canada. And uh, again, they're <clears throat> surfacing a wide variety of kinds of content on their site, uh, information about uh, partners, employees, you know, lawyers, uh, clearly part of their uh, use case here is to uh, uh, to surface information about people who work for them and uh, the skills that those people have, but also they do publish a wide variety of other kinds of content as well. As I start to type in a query here, uh, on their particular site, what we'll see is query suggestions, suggested results for for that particular search, and they can tune uh, what are the best kinds of results they want to sur they want to surface, whether it's about specific practices or industries or indeed uh, about certain partners uh, who work for the organization as well. There are a variety of ways in which you can surface these query suggestions, and we'll, we'll show a couple of them on, on uh, the next couple of uh, example websites as well. But in, in the case of, uh, of Faskin, they decided what they wanted to do was really suggest not just queries, like litigation, for example, but also results. So effectively doing a search as you know, before the users actually hit the search button, if you will. And that's an option that, uh, that some of our, our customers like to, uh, to expose as well. Kind of similar to um, <clears throat> to the uh, Dignity uh, Memorial site, um, they, uh, I think Faskin provides a nice rich interface with uh, imagery associated with each result as well. So you can change what we would refer to as the result list template, the layout for different kinds of content. It might be different whether you're looking at um, perhaps uh, case details versus information about a particular practice or, or, or a um, uh, division of, of Faskin Martineau. Uh, so it can be very, the layout can be very customized to suit the kind of content that is uh, being displayed. And as you can see, um, these refiners or facets on the left-hand side allow a user to drill down to, I'm looking for actually uh, people perhaps who work for the organization. And you can define where appropriate boosting rules. In many cases for law firms, they want to actually return partners towards the top of the list with perhaps associates or clerks or other types of employees, uh, perhaps a little bit lower down there. And that's a key part of what Caveo can do, especially in regard to our integration to Sitecore, is the ability to, to, to tune these sorts of results in an easy manner. I'll show you this in, in a little bit when we get into the back end of Caveo for Sitecore as well. Uh, but you can take advantage of the templates, the tags, the properties that you're creating uh, as you create your content in Sitecore. Uh, in order to tune the search experience for the user as well. Another uh, slightly different use case, uh, Alcatel-Lucent um, has content in a variety of sources, uh, Sitecore and some other data sources as well, on their really effectively customer support website. Um, you can see here uh, examples of uh, hierarchical facets here as well. So these are Caveo components, all of these facets, filters, refiners, whatever you'd like to call them, uh, on the left-hand side. These are standard Caveo components that you can drag and drop into your search experience, uh, leveraging the data that you're, that you're, the ways that you're tagging your content uh, in Sitecore as well to help the user to narrow uh, the scope of their search, whether they're doing that before they actually do a search or indeed, of course, uh, afterwards. <coughs> One of the interesting things that you'll see here, as I start to type in a query, uh, even if I uh, misspell the word phone, uh, is that we can uh, we can make our our, uh, our query suggestions very specific uh, to good quality suggestions. And this is actually leveraging what I mentioned earlier around uh, machine learning as applied to usage analytics information. What we're suggesting here are queries that are close to what I'm typing in, not necessarily exactly the same, uh, but that have been successful for a number of other users in the past. So this is really Caveo learning from the behavior of the users on your website in order to make better quality query suggestions. It's a really powerful capability. It's the sort of thing that most users, generally speaking, I would say, expect uh, from search technology. Well trained by Google.com, but specific to what's going on on your site. So we make it very straightforward, very simple for administrators to simply create a machine learning model effectively telling Caveo, learn from the user behavior on this website and start making 
suggestions based on what content has been useful to other users, judged by their behavior. And that's really the only thing I really wanted to show off on the, on the Alcatel Lucent website. I think it's a, a nicely deployed site, very simple. Uh, it's all around uh, support and reference information for technical customers, uh, people who are uh, purchasing or, or using Alcatel Lucent's uh, telephone and other uh, technology uh, products. One last example I'd like to show is actually not a real customer, <laughs> but is in fact a, a bit of a demo environment. Um, and this is a fictitious company called Habitat Electronics. What I'd like to, uh, to show just really briefly on their site is the way in which Caveo can leverage Sitecore personalization. Uh, so if I go on to this website and I have a bit of a look around and, and perhaps I want to um, look at uh, appliances here, home appliances, I go and click on that section of the website. This Sitecore instance is set up in such a way that there are personalization rules based on what I'm doing uh, in terms of clicks, in terms of uh, where uh, where I'm perhaps physically located, et cetera, so that Sitecore can say, oh, based on what you've clicked on, I think you're interested in buying kitchens. And that's great. Sitecore has very powerful capabilities, rules driven for segmentation of users uh, in order to help drive how content is going to be shown to them. Well, as I mentioned, Caveo is able to take advantage of that information as well. So if I go in and then do a search perhaps for the word power, just as an example, the results that I'm gonna come back with are in fact related to uh, the persona that, uh, that, that Sitecore has judged me to be a part of. So these are kitchen appliance related information. But of course, uh, Habitat has other kinds of products available as well. For example, uh, computer gaming type, uh, type of, uh, of products and, and, and hardware. So if I go on uh, just within Sitecore, not really touching Caveo directly here at all, I go and look at some perhaps uh, gaming controllers, those sorts of things. Sitecore is going to figure out that perhaps, well, maybe I'm not uh, really a kitchen buyer. I'm more of a, of a gamer. Now, we've simplified the kinds of rules a little bit for this, for this demo here uh, to make it clear uh, as to what, um, uh, what kind of persona I am very quickly. If I now go and search for uh, the word power, I'm going to see different sorts of results related to what Sitecore thinks my persona is now. This is something that really just speaks to the tight integration of Caveo and Sitecore and the ability here to leverage the work that perhaps you're doing to personalize your website with regard to search. And that's something that I think is a very uh, key capability as, as many uh, organizations are, are starting to take much more advantage of Sitecore's powerful personalization capabilities. With that, I'm going to uh, swap back over and show you just a just a taste, perhaps, of uh, of what the Caveo administration side of things looks like, and also what Caveo looks like within Sitecore as you define, as you design, really these sorts of search experiences as well. But first, on the on the Caveo side, this is uh, just a little taste of the sort of things that you can see within the Caveo administration console. I'd mentioned analytics dashboards and reports. This is an example of uh, really a very common sort of uh, dashboard that our customers will make use of. The information that uh, is important to them typically is going to include well, how busy is my website in terms of queries, in terms of uh, clicks, in terms of how many unique users I have searching on my site. But there's also uh, contextual information about these users. In this case here, we've got some context based on their location. Typically, we derive this from their IP address, but you can customize what, what is logged to Caveo as well. This is all very interactive as well. I can uh, click on this section of the pie and see just what users, users from Brazil have been doing on my site in terms of searches and clicks. Other contextual information such as uh, the device that they're on, are they on a smartphone, a personal computer? <coughs> it can be interesting information from an analysis point of view. It can also, potentially, uh, these sort of things could have an impact, or you could like them to have an impact, on what kind of search results should be returned. I'll talk about that a little further in just a moment or two. Clearly, information such as the top queries, top products, top pages on your website, you're more than likely going to have uh, more than one search interface on your site. These are all interesting pieces of information that can have an impact uh, and, and can help you to improve both the content being published to your site and the way in which search works on that content. <coughs> you can also see here, also with regard to the context of the users, information about the personas the Sitecore personas that we've detected that have been searching on your site. And of course, again, all this is very interactive as well. I can see how well search is working for Carrie the Kitchen Buyer, for example. How well search is working can also, uh, we can dig into a little more detail here perhaps around top queries that don't have results. 
These are cases that you might want to look at it on a fairly, fairly regular basis to say, uh, are these just misspellings? Of course, as you saw, we can correct misspellings to a certain extent. Uh, or are they just using different terminology than you happen to use when you're publishing your content? This might be a use case where you might want to consider creating some synonyms in the Caveo thesaurus to address these uh, different terminologies that your users are actually using on your site. Or you might want to create new content or tag your content somewhat differently to suit the language and the, the use cases of, of your most common users on your site. You also see here uh, other sorts of information, queries that don't lead to clicks, queries that don't lead to other kinds of events, purchases perhaps. If you've got a very commerce-driven website, pardon me, um, you could log as an event a purchase event. So you could see through Caveo, through our reporting technology, what sorts of searches, what sorts of clicks are leading to the outcomes that are interesting to your organization be it a commerce-related uh, organization, more of a customer self-service support kind of website. <clears throat> These kinds of pieces of information are extremely useful to help you improve how search is working. How search is working is <clears throat> often defined in what we call query pipelines. So a query pipeline is really a set of rules around search. This is where you can define things like synonyms, things like top results for particular queries. You'll notice that you can have more than one query pipeline. And this helps you with a couple of different things. One is you might want to have different kinds of search rules applied to different kinds of users or different pages on your website, perhaps, um, different users from different geographical locations. And secondly, as you start to change these rules, and I'll show you what these look like in just a moment, um, you would want to be able to do A-B testing across them. So you would want to be able to look at those kinds of dashboards and reports and say, well, are these new rules that I'm creating, these new synonyms perhaps, or top results, are these heading towards the outcomes that I want? Are they improving click-through and click-rank? Are they improving purchases? So within a given uh, query pipeline, this is where you can define things like synonyms. Typically, I'm not going to suggest that you try and recreate Roger's thesaurus here. You don't want to necessarily have such a broad scope of synonyms that search becomes imprecise. Instead, you should probably look at those usage analytics reports. Where does it make sense to create synonyms? What are relatively common queries, perhaps, that end up with no results because the user is simply searching for terms that you don't happen to have in your in your uh, in your content? Also, this is where you can define top results for particular queries, and you can define conditions for these as well. So you might want to say this particular result should be the top result for a certain persona, or perhaps for users from particular locations. So all of these kinds of rules within a query pipeline can have conditions associated with them as well. So you can start to really personalize the behavior of search for uh, your users on your site. There's a number of other options in here. I'm not going to get into all of these today. Again, this is really intended to be a little bit of an introduction uh, into Caveo for Sitecore. We'd be, we'd be very happy to dig into more detail with you uh, at a later date. Similarly, there are many other administration options over here, and again, I'm not going to get through uh, all of these today, but this is where you would also define sources that you're indexing, the terminology that we use uh, around data sources, repositories, websites that we index. You can see here in, in this example, I've got a couple of Sitecore indexes. These are really managed from within Sitecore, but you have access to them here as an administrator of Caveo. If I wanted to add additional sources, you can see that a subset of the kinds of sources that we support here as well, whether it's a, a site map, whether it's a YouTube channel, websites you want to index, SharePoint content, uh, and so on. And there's actually quite a longer list uh, that you can uh, integrate with here as well in order to allow your users to index the content that you want to uh, publish, whether it's in Sitecore or not. So what does Caveo look like within Sitecore? <clears throat> well, I'm going to log into my uh, little Sitecore instance here and, and show you a bit of this. As I mentioned, there is a package or a module that is uh, installed on your Sitecore servers. And you can see as you go to the Sitecore control panel, um, some access to that, whether it's you know, a link directly to the Caveo admin tool that we just had a look at, or <clears throat> diagnostic information about the connection between Caveo and Sitecore. Now, um, Vincent had mentioned uh, early on that uh, when you're setting up Caveo on your Sitecore server, there are going to be some configuration options that you uh, will have access to, essentially defining how is content going to be pushed to Caveo to be indexed. And as this page refreshes itself, we'll see those down here in a moment uh, in the Caveo for Sitecore configuration files section. 
we're making again that uh, silent install process much quicker and easier so that these once you've defined on your master server perhaps what these configuration options are they can really easily be also pushed and installed onto your content deployment servers or your other uh, CM servers as well. What we also do within this diagnostic page, as you can see here, is checking, uh, going out and making a check against the uh, Kaveo cloud endpoints to make sure everything, in fact, is up and running uh, as you can see it is here. And again, these sort of configuration files that you might occasionally modify if you're changing the schema of your, uh, of your site core instance, this is typically the, the file that you'll be working with the most would be the search provider configuration file. Now, um, managing the index itself is managed very much like you would with the Solar or Lucene indexes, directly through the Sitecore indexing manager. Of course, as you publish a new page, as I mentioned, it's pushed to Kaveo to be indexed right away. But if you ever need to do a complete uh, rebuild of the Kaveo indexes, typically the master and the web indexes, the customer-facing indexes that they search, these are the ones that Kaveo uh, typically replaces uh, as well. So you can manage that directly through here. And then, of course, there's the, the side of things with regard to constructing that, that search page or those search pages. And that's really managed through the, um, through the Sitecore uh, Experience Editor. And if I go down here into my uh, uh, instance of, uh, of Sitecore, I'm sorry, I've gone into the wrong section. I've got one or more search pages. And I've got one here that, in fact, is a Kaveo search page. And this contains, again, those components, those search components like filters, facets, a, uh, a search box, all those sort of features built into a page in Sitecore. Go in and edit this. The, the, the idea here of Kaveo integrating into the Sitecore Experience Editor is that you don't necessarily need to have uh, a dedicated Kaveo developer to build these pages. These are things that a um, Sitecore uh, content editor is able to work with. So you can see these sorts of components on the page. Again, this is all a part of what Vincent had described as the Kaveo Hive framework. So they're lightweight components you can drag and drop or place onto the page to suit needs of your particular application. But very common uh, components that you'll make use of include really this master component, the search interface itself. And here is where you can define again, without necessarily having to be a coder, various kinds of rules to boost certain kinds of content. I'm just gonna show you a quick example of what that can look like. Based on a rules editor that looks very much like what you would work with in, in Sitecore anyway. But as an example, if I wanted to boost in my results certain types of content from the Sitecore content tree, I can go and do that. So I can say what I wanna um, boost on the, on the page in general is landing pages. So I've got content about television sets, for example. And if someone searches for the word television, I don't necessarily want to have a, <clears throat> a, a, a list of, or I don't want to return at the top of the list, individual TV uh, examples, but I want to boost landing pages. I want my television set landing page to appear at the top. So a simple rule like this to, for example, add a, a nice big numeric score to any results that correspond to that part of the state core content tree, you can see it's a very easy process to do. And one that, again, you don't need to necessarily engage a developer uh, to do. Many other options available to you here, and again, given time, I'm not gonna go through uh, all of them by any means, but they might include, as we can see here selected right now, automatic boosting based on persona, like we saw in the, uh, in the example on the Habitat site. You can filter the results that are coming back as well. We saw an example of boosting rules. This is an example of a filtering rule. I only want to return product results. And again, this is very much tied into the Sitecore content tree here as well. And many other options here. Do I want to uh, only return results where the language of the result corresponds to the browser settings uh, that we've detected for the user, what their language preferences are? Do I want to change the page layout a little bit, the number of results per page, the size of the little snippet or description of, uh, of each piece of, uh, of content? And do I want to include external sources, like those blog sites, like that YouTube channel? We can simply put the name of the source from here into that uh, content editor, uh, into that external content box here. Numerous other options available to you here again, these filters or facets uh, as we create a new one or 
uh, or, or edit an existing one, we can select from Sitecore uh, the particular field that we want this filter or facet to be based on. These facets can also be based on uh, computed fields. There's many other options to control how they actually work, different captions, these sort of things as well. And the layout itself, uh, different uh, template layout uh, layouts are available to you, whether you want to display an image or not, or certain metadata fields, these can be def defined in a, in a result list template. And by default, we also have uh, some nice options around the, uh, around the layout, a card layout versus a list layout. You could expose this to the user if you wanted to. You wanted to give them a little more access uh, to configure for themselves what the layout looks like, whether you're sorting by relevance, you're sorting by price, by rating, many other options available to you here. You can really sort by any field that uh, we've indexed. So again, this is really just meant to be a, a, a short overview of Coveo for Sitecore, kind of an introduction. I hope it's been useful to you so far. Uh, again, I'd, uh, I'd emphasize uh, what uh, Coveo is all about is <coughs> relevance, searching content of, across a variety of sources, but with a very tight, uh, in particular, uh, integration into Sitecore from the point of view of indexing content, from the point of view of ease of creation and configuration and, and change, for that matter, uh, of the search layout. With a lot of powerful tools on the back end here to, to tune relevance, whether based on machine learning, based on rules that the administrator defines uh, as well. Um, <clears throat> Just to wrap up, as we're coming towards the end of the, the session, as, uh, as Clara had mentioned, uh, happy to take any questions that you might have at this point, or of course you can uh, contact us afterwards and we can follow up with, uh, with an email and, and discuss further at, at, your, uh, uh, at your convenience. If you, as a partner or a customer, are interested in trying Kaveo for Sitecore, you can go to our website and there is a uh, download a trial uh, available to you as well, so you can set up a, a sandbox edition, a fully functional sandbox edition of Kaveo for Sitecore. Uh, or, of course, uh, a next step might also be to uh, simply talk with us a little further about your requirements. With that, Clara, I think I'll hand back to you to ask if there are any questions. Thank you, Paul, and thank you, Vesa, for, for that great presentation. Um, everyone, it is time to um, ask your questions in the question panel, in the question section, sorry, in the control panel. So we still have um, some time to enter those, so please do so now. Uh, we do have a few questions in already, uh, so let's start with those. So first question for you, Paul, is are analytics available for all versions of Coveo for Sitecore? Oh, great question. Thanks, Clara. Um, yes, they are. Uh, well, I would say with, uh, with one exception. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I'm just uh, on, our, on our website right now and showing you, hopefully, uh, the different editions of Coveo for Sitecore. I didn't really get into this again short introduction. Um, for the pro cloud and enterprise cloud uh, editions of Kaveo for Sitecore, yes, absolutely, usage analytics are included, no additional charge. We do still support a free on-premises version of Kaveo for Sitecore, that is to say, where our, our index, the Kaveo index, is actually hosted on a server within your own environment. Today, we've been really focusing, and as a company, we're really focused <coughs> on the cloud editions of Kaveo for Sitecore. Just a lot more flexible, a lot more scalable, a lot more features that we can provide. We do still support this free edition. It is limited in terms of what data sources it can index. It's site core only, none of those other external web sources, and it does not provide that usage analytics uh, data logging or dashboards or anything like that. Um, and it also uh, does not include support. Um, so it's it's still in use by, by many customers as they're getting started, perhaps for smaller implementations. But really, the pro and uh, the, the cloud editions are, are the way we're going, and they're, they're the ones that include the analytics. Thanks, Clara. Thank you. Another question we have are out of the box Coveo uh, components, web forms, or MVC components? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, they are MVC components. We do still support um, an older version of Coveo for site. Well, an older editor or older components that are that do support uh, web forms as well, but we will eventually be uh, um, be moving away from that. Perfect, thank you. Another question: If some content cannot be accessed by all users in Sitecore, should it be indexed by Coveo? Can it can Coveo integrate with user rights? Mm, yeah, that's a great question. I didn't really dig into that in, into too much detail today. Uh, but yes, Kaveo can index the permissions uh, of content and limit users to only see what they have permissions to see in Sitecore. That said, there are uh, some examples of customers who actually also 
still want non-authenticated users, for example, to be able to search content they don't have access to, but they shouldn't be able to actually click on and view the content. It's effectively, something like a, a teaser to say, you know, this this article exists, but um, you, you should become a member of our organization to actually view it. So there are options there around how you would like it to work uh, in terms of permissions. But by default, yes, we would limit uh, users to only see what uh, Sitecore says they should be able to see. Thank you very much. Another question. How do you set up a Coveo Hive search page in Sitecore? Yeah. Um, so within the experience editor, very much as I was uh, as I was um, showing here, this is an example of a uh, Coveo Hive page uh, within Sitecore, consisting of a number of these components here. Uh, whether it's the, the the overall search interface, whether it's the analytics component, we've really broken up what used to be kind of a monolithic um, Coveo component uh, for for search into lighter weight, lazy loading components like this. Um, there's some great details on our documentation website, which is all, of course, searchable and publicly available. And uh, that might be a good a good place to start into you know, more technical details of that. There's a, a nice um, project guide document, in fact, uh, that uh, that also walks you through step by step how exactly to do this. Um, and if you have follow up questions, of course, please feel free to contact us. Thank you. And another question we have: What is the best approach between item crawling or web page crawling? Mm. Uh, I would have to say it depends. <laughs> um, it depends on how you're making use of items uh, on uh, on your site core site. Most often, <clears throat> most commonly, I would say uh, our customers would actually crawl or index rather uh, web pages that contain potentially multiple items, so that you would only return results that are, in fact, complete web pages. There are cases in which it makes sense to also index some individual items. I don't know, a PDF file, for example, that may not be a part of a, a full page layout. Um, you can do either, uh, but most often what people will do is, uh, is index the complete web pages. Thank you. Um, next question, how does Kobeo upgrade works? Does it mean, does it necessarily Sorry, does it necessary need to upgrade Coveo version with Sitecore's upgrade? Uh, again, it varies a little bit. Gen generally speaking, yes, I would say you would want to upgrade the um, Coveo for Sitecore package or module that's installed on your Sitecore server. Um, our packages are most often tied to a particular Sitecore version. There are cases where you don't actually have to do that upgrade, but most often we would recommend that you do. Uh, of course, the cloud backend itself uh, is compatible with all the different versions of Kaveo for Sitecore. Uh, we do go back as far as Sitecore 7.2, I believe, still, uh, and we support up to version 9 uh, and the latest upgrade, or update, pardon me, uh, to uh, Kaveo to Sitecore itself. Um, there is actually a, you know, a pretty thorough, again, section on our documentation page, uh, walking through the upgrade process, what's required. Uh, we, For our cloud customers, we do provide both a sandbox and a production environment of Kaveo and the Kaveo index in the cloud. Uh, so of course, we do recommend strongly that you uh, test out any upgrades uh, in your sandbox before uh, moving to production. Thank you so much. Another question we have, um, with Coveo, do we completely avoid utilizing Lucene or Solar with Sitecore? Ah, great question as well. Not necessarily. In fact, I would say no. <laughs> um, uh, I uh, showed you briefly on the um, uh, control panel page uh, that uh, Coveo typically replaces the, the master and web indexes of Sitecore. But there are, of course, a lot of other indexes within Sitecore, typically you know, used for quick database lookup, more or less. Uh, it's not so much providing, you know, it's not so much what's being searched by the user, what's being used by the end user when they're searching for products or, or pages on your site. So we don't replace those. Those are typically, and in the most recent versions of Sitecore, I, I believe mandatorily, if that's a word, uh, using Solar as the indexing platform for them. And that's, you know, we strongly recommend that you can, well, we almost demand that you continue to use Solar for those indexes, but Kaveo replaces the web and master indexes and potentially some custom indexes. Thank you so much. Um, I don't see any more questions in the queue. Um, if anyone has other questions, please feel free to uh, email them to us 
and we'll make sure to, to give you an answer. Uh, I think now will be a great time to wrap up. Just a couple of quick reminders before we sign off. We'll send the recording to all attendees within the next 24 hours. And please remember to help us improve future webinars by completing the brief survey at the end of the session. On behalf of Paul, Vincent, and the rest of the team, I'd like to thank you for attending our Coveo for Sitecore demo webinar session. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great day.